Whitehall, 1212. This is Scotland Yard. For the first time in its history, Scotland Yard opens its official files to bring you the true story of some of its most important cases. These are the true stories. The plain, unvarnished facts, just as they occurred, reenacted for you by an old British car. Only the names have, for obvious reasons, been changed. The stories are presented for the full cooperation of Scotland Yard. Research for Whitehall 1212 is from Percy Hoskins, chief crime reporter of the London Daily Express. The stories for radio are written and directed by Willis Cooper. You will now hear the voice of Chief Superintendent John Davidson, who is in charge of the famous Black Museum of Scotland Yard. Good afternoon. Let me show you this thing. Have a good look. Unless you're a member of a rather uncommon profession, I doubt you'll know what it is. Like many of the exhibits... In the Black Museum here, this is a murder weapon. And like many of our murder weapons, it is a tool of a trade. And even after I tell you what it is, I wonder if you'll know what it's for. It's an ankush, a gold used by an elephant man, a mahout. You've seen these things before, I wager you. But I'll agree that this is an odd place to find one. And here is Inspector Samuel Tupper, the first of us from Scotland Yard who saw it. Inspector? I was at the head of the rota of inspectors this particular night in the autumn of 1928, so it was my job to go to Regent's Park when the call came in that murder had been done. The taper house of the zoo there is near the outer circle of the park. Excuse me. Would it be a good idea, Inspector, if you told what a taper house is? Oh. It's where they keep the taper, sir. I'm sure you don't mean wax candles. No, sir. The taper is a hooped swine-like mammal allied to the rhinoceros. It has its four toes and its front feet and three on the back, and its snout is prolonged into a short, mobile proboscis. Found in India and Sumatra, and there are species in certain parts of South America, notably Brazil, where it's found in the vicinity of abundant water. Its body is generally blackish, except for the Sumatran variety, which has white patches. It's partly nocturnal, quite gentle in disposition, and it grunts. Thank you. Quite welcome, sir. These were the ordinary ones, mostly. Blackish ones. In the taper house. Yeah. I found... Police Constable John Charles Daly awaiting me at the door of the Taper House while his companion, Police Constable Henry Eastman, was on duty upstairs. Alongside the entrance, a man was lying on the grass. He was dressed in oriental clothing and was very quiet. Who did it, I asked P.C. Daly. It's not him, sir. He's just broke his leg. Who's dead, then? I said somebody was dead. The dead is upstairs, sir, where P.C. Eastman is, sir. Who is this, then? I don't know his name, sir. He's some sort of Indian or something. He jumped out of the window or fell out, is the way I understand it. Don't you know, ma'am? No, sir, not very much, I'm afraid, sir. Look here, Constable. I'm sorry, sir, I can't understand him. Oh? And now the vet's given him morphia or something, and he's passed out, and the other one's dead. Oh, oh. Has there been a doctor here? Only the vet, sir. He'd been treating a sick elephant, sir, and he came hurrying over when he heard all the commotion, sir. Oh, what, what was the commotion? All the shouting and yelling, sir. Who was shouting? I don't know, sir. That's what the vet said attracted him, and he came hurrying over. This chap was howling and moaning, and the vet looked at him, and he said Dern saw his leg was all fractured, and he went back and got his morphia and a syringe. How did you find out about it? Why, sir, P.C. Eastman and me, sir, we were at the moon, and we were on patrol outside the park, sir, and I climbed over the railing alongside the privet edge, sir, to see, and here they were. Who? This fellow, sir, and the vet who was just sticking him with this great syringe. So I inquires what's going on here, and the vet says, the man's hurt, and he knocks the window there. Window? 
Oh, that one with the glass broken. Huh? Yes, sir. He jumped out according to the vet. He could understand it a little. He talked about it. To see his face and his arms cut by the glass. Ah, yes, let's see. Well, then P.C. Eastman hurried up the stairway, and in a moment he shouted down, there's a murdered man up there, and this man stopped moaning and went to sleep, and the vet went upstairs, and P.C. Eastman came down and went to find a telephone to call the archer. I see. You haven't been up there yet? No, sir. First I was here while P.C. Eastman was up there, and then I was here whilst he went to make the telephone call, and then I was here until you arrived, sir. You don't know anything about the murder, then? No, sir. I've been here, but uh, I could go up with you now, sir, if you like. I don't think this chap's very likely to get up and walk off for a long while. Well, morphia wet off, you know. Yes, sir, but he has a broken leg. And besides, the vet has been working on an elephant. I doubt he remembered to change the dose in the syringe, sir. The upstairs room in the taper house to which I repaired after my interview with Police Constable Daly was, in the accurate sense of the word, a, a shambles. In the middle of the disordered floor, flat on his back, lay the murdered man amongst the ruin of his possession. Police Constable Eastman identified the various objects in the room. This here was apparently his bed, sir, but the way it's tore up, it looks as if them wild animals downstairs had been at it. Odd sort of man. I am led to understand, sir, that many of these are oriental people use no mattress or anything. And uh, here, sir, is what he must have used as a cupboard. What's in it? Well, you see the money scattered about the floor, sir. Hmm. Never saw so many pennies in my life. There are two or three copper pennies still in this here leather bag, sir. I fancy they were all in here once. Oh, and you, sir? Yes. Are you the veterinary that the other constable told me about? I am the veterinary, yes, sir. I am Lawrence Ainley, sir. You gave that fellow down there a shot of morphia? Yes, sir. Constable said you gave him enough for an elephant. No, oh, hardly. have to admit I just remembered in time, there. What else, constable? Well, sir, them there is his clothes. Look as if they've been ripped to pieces by whoever killed him, sir, I expect. And uh, these here... What, what are they? Look like bank deposit books, eh? That is what they are, sir. They his, the dead man? His name was Ahmed Ali. Oh, Hindu. Indian. Mohammedan, not a Hindu. How do you know? He's very well known around the zoo here. Yeah? That is the name on the bank book, sir. It was his. That's it. Uh, uh, quite a respectable balance, sir. Two hundred and twelve pounds. Never mind that. What about him? He is dead, sir. I don't see how you could tell, Constable. Well, sir, he's been beaten about the head. Something horrid, sir. Uh, oh. <laughs> Didn't know you was joking, sir. Very thoroughly beaten. Wonder what with. Hammer or axe, I'm saying, from the looks. Did you find anything like that, Constable? No, sir. But it wasn't necessary anyway. Huh? What do you think? The thing under him, Inspector. The thing is lying on. What's he lying on? Blimey, sir. It's fair pushed right through his heart. See? What is that thing? Looks like a... Like a boat hook right through him. It's an uncush. A what? A what? An uncush. An elephant hook. That was Ahmed's job. He was an elephant man. You have any idea who did this, Mr. Rainley? <coughs> what? What? that? Yes. What is that? Animal? It's the other man. What other? The one with the broken leg. Downstairs. Come along. I want to see what he's got to say. Yes, sir. Stay here, Constable. Come on, Doc. Coming. Who is this one? Do you know, Doc? Another elephant man. He lives here with Ahmed Ali. Anyone else in the building? Nobody but Taper. Very good thing I gave him that shot. Was he badly hurt? Well, he has that broken leg and he's been battered about the head. But whoever killed Ahmed tried to do the same to him, I'd say. He's come too, sir. How does he feel? He sounds terrible. Sir. Let's have a look at him. 
Hotom. Do you know the fellow? Yes, of course. Chopra Hotom. I straightened out his leg a bit, but we'd better find a real people doctor, you know. Uh, Constable, go find a telephone, please. Yes. What are you going to do with him, Inspector? Chopra Hotom. You know what to do, Constable? Telephone for an ambulance, sir. I'll let him take to King's Cross, sir. That's the nearest hospital. Right. Go with him and stay till you're relieved. I'll want to know whatever he says. I can't understand that, sir. It's Hindi he's speaking, but he's a Burman. Go call the ambulance, Constable. Yes, sir. How is it you know all about this flight? I, I thought you were a veterinary. Oh, I missed the job, Commander. Sir, she is critical heart, me, hey. A bit shoprata. You understand what he says? You speak it? Oh, a little, yes. Here, 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 hold it. Ask him what happened, will you? That's what I am asking him. Here, hold it. What do you say? To Moscow, Malam, hey? No, no, no. What's he say? Asti, Asti, Bo. He says some yellow men came. Yellow men? Chinese? Here, what China log here, Bo? No, no, Japanese, he thinks. Ask him if he recognized them. He said no. Shall I say, Onke Pass, that means Arturian. What? Four of them. Clubs. Hammers they had. That guy. That guy. Robbers, he thinks. Well, they didn't act much like robbers. Ankush, they... Ankush. Oh, uh, uh, didn't he say Ankush? That elephant hook he was stabbed with? Well, that's exactly what he was saying, Inspector. Ankush. Ankush. Yes. They hit for me. I... I... Jump. Calling out. Man run. I'm mentally You better give him another step with that elephant needle, Doctor. He'll be all right. Get the ambulance. On the way, sir. Well, then carry on, Constable. Come on, Mr. Ainley. I'd like you to tell me some more about all this, if you please. Oh, of course. We could find a place to sit down. I've got a bungalow over here across the steakhouse. Could have a drop or something with me, Inspector? I'd like a cup of tea. Oh, God. Oh, sick. The officer here will see you all right. Mushka, Kayo Yoga! This will hold the little boy, you'll be all right. No! No, no, police! No, no, police! No! Now then, look here, no, boy. No. Police won't no. hurt you. Take it easy. No, no, no. We hope you get well. No, 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 police! No, no, police! No. Why do you suppose that chap's so suspicious of the police? General principles, I expect. Oh? Why not? I'm very often suspicious of police myself. Are you? Why may I ask? General principles, Inspector. That boy's making a lot of noise like that. I think I'll go back and give him another shot of morphine. I shouldn't if I were you, Miss Why? Why not? He's in pain? Obviously. And if he were under the influence of a shot of morphine... He wouldn't be able to talk, would he? Of course not. He So uh, let's not give him another shot of morphia. What are you driving at? I say, what are you driving at? I think you know more about this than you pretend to, Emily. And what do you base your suspicions on? General principles. Yeah, that's ridiculous. General police principles. What? What in the world would I... What, what, I... Uh, I don't know, Doctor. But I have heard and seen enough to convince me that... The man not... obviously knows who murdered the fellow up there. Well, of course, he said he saw the four men. Didn't they try to kill him, too? You heard him say it yourself. I don't understand his language, Doctor. I don't know what he said. I told you. You said you told him. Why should I lie to you? I don't know, I'm sure. Now, let me ask you... Why should you be so quick to give a man a dose of morphia which effectually stopped his talking when you first saw him? That wasn't why I did it. Why did you do it? All right. 
arrest me. I shall. On what charge, then? Mr. Ainley, I must detain you on suspicion of concealing evidence in the case of the death of the man, Ahmed Ali. Go ahead. And I warn you that anything you say will be taken down in writing may be used in evidence. Will you come with me, please? Did you ever hear a taper? Try sitting by yourself with only a recently dead man for company in the house where the tapers live. It's an experience you're not likely to forget. And I rather suspect the tapers won't forget it either. Constable Eastman had taken Mr. Amy in charge and had escorted him to the doctor's bungalow near the snake house where he had telephoned Scotland Yard for assistance in carting the doctor off to jail. I heard the ambulance arrive and depart with Constable Daly and Tom Bowen his broken leg. That left me, the dead man, and the tapers to ourselves. I waited. The dead man waited. The tapers. Yes. Very cozy. I waited. Panther, I believe. Crocodile, no doubt. I perspired gently. Ahmed Ali lay there quietly under the glare from the little incandescent bulb. We stared at each other. And then, exactly like an old Leslie Howard Scarlet Pimpernel picture, the door opened slowly. And a man who looked like Leslie Howard stood there smiling at me. I say, you're not the dead man, are you? Who... Who are you? Oh, I say, old fellow, did I frighten you? I'm so sorry. These rubber soles I'm always wearing, they tell me I sit about like a blooming ghost or something. But I assure you I'm not. Who the I'm... devil are you? Oh, sorry, I'm George Scott. I'm afraid I'm a police surgeon. Didn't Constable Eastman telephone you I was on my way? I must have frightened you out of you your... You didn't frighten me at all, old man. I was a little startled, I admit, but... Um... What was that? Only a taper. Oh, yes. This is the taper house. Constable Eastman said. Where is Eastman? I'm putting the car somewhere. I came on. In your rubber sole shoes? Oh, I say, I am sorry about frightening you, you out of your... didn't frighten me, I said. Well, sorry anyway. I didn't mean to, you know. Pity Eastman didn't telephone you. Uh, there isn't any telephone here. Should have thought of that. Tapers don't use telephones, do they? Just the dead chap. Yes. Uh, Must look at him. What I came for, you know. Well, as Eliza Doolittle said, it's my belief they done him in. Allowing for the difference in genders, of course. Uh, who did it? Don't know, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> what's that? That's not a paper. Eastman. Oh, good. Have been smacked off the yeah. Hello, Eastman. Hello, Inspector. Is Mr. Scott there? Yes, he's here. Yes, I'm here, Constable. This chap's been stabbed too, Inspector. You are an inspector, aren't you? Yes. Come in, Eastman. Stabbed. With a ankush, sir. What's an ankush? That thing sticking through him. Yes? But that didn't kill him. I didn't think it did either. Well, he's dead. Uh, excuse me, sir. Quite all right, Constable. No. This was done after he was dead. He was beaten to death. How do you know that, sir? Well, the chap who presumably saw him beaten to death said that the men who did it came up here with clubs and hammers. They hammered the door down, sir, by the looks of it. Somebody did. Look what they did to the lock. Look what they did to him. What were they after? His money? I expect so. Why didn't they take it? I wonder about that, too. You should. Somebody's kidding you, Inspector. I suspect that myself. That animal doctor, sir? Good Lord, are they making doctors out of... Doctors for animals, Mr. Scott. 
Oh? <laughs> really? Uh... He's in jail. Uh... Oh, excuse me, sir. Constable should be seen and not heard, friend Eastman. Yes, sir. Who is this animal doctor, Inspector? He's in jail. He talked too much to see at me. Oh? Think he did it? Think he knows who did Who? Four people. Japanese, he said. Who said? The other chap mixed up in this. Said they smashed the door down and then came in and beat this one to death and tried to attack him. Where is he? In the hospital. Broke his leg jumping out that window. Of course, there was a draft in here. Tore a big piece out of himself on the way out, too. Where? Left it hanging on the point of this shard of glass. This came out of his arm, I'd say. I had a big wound on his left arm, but I was under the impression that was caused by the beating. Glass cut. I'd better take along these shreds of gentlemen. I'd like to compare it with them. See if it fits them. If he says it was caused by a blow, I shall give him the lie in his teeth. If you can understand him. Understand him? He's a Burman, Burmese. There's this other gentleman with the boat hook in his torso. Ankush. Eh? It's an Ankush. An elephant god. <clears throat> he is not a Burmese, sir. He's a Hindian. A Mormon, and his name's Ahmed Ali, sir. You see that these fellows who came in here and exterminated him used cl- clubs. Hammers and clubs, I was told. They didn't use any clubs on this fellow. What, sir? None of these marks looked like the marks of a club. You can almost see the shape of the hammer head here. 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 Here, too. They gave him a rare beating, didn't they? Strike me pink if they did. That's a perfect. Excuse me, sir. Oh, uh, what are you looking at, Mr. Scott? These marks on the door frame. They look very much like those on the chap's head. I'd wager they're the same. They probably are. They broke down the door and then came in and beat him to death. Sure. Probably did. We'd better get the two marks measured, then if we can find the hammer. Sure. Yes, Constable. Sir, sure, there's a hammer down there. What? Where? They're down there on the cross, quite close to where this one has jumped with lying moaning. Could that be the one? Well, how would he get down there? Well, it's down there, sir. Can you find it, you think? Well, sir... If you was to be so kind as to shine your torch out of the window... Go along. See if you can find it. Yes, sir. What I want to know is how he could have got down there. Probably wrenched it away from one of the assassins and leapt through the window with it. Why? Blessed if I know. Find the torch, sir. Eh? Where are you? To the right, sir. Uh, 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 left, I mean. uh, there it is. I can see it from here. That's it, Constable. Fetch it on up. Oh, it's all bloody, sir. What did you expect? Ostrich feathers? Eastman brought the hammer up to us and we tested it against the wounds in Ahmed Ali's skull. It's fit. Then we tested it by laying it in the uh, indentations where the hammer had smashed against the wooden door. It fits, sir. But how could he take it with him when he jumped out of the bleeding window? How could he possibly... That's what I'd like to know. Well, he's a lot braver man than I'd ever be. All right. All me, sir. Snatching it right out of the end. He's of a the... brave man. Eastman. Sir. There's a telephone in Ainley's bungalow. Oh, yes, sir, I know. I want you to get down there and get through at once to Constable Daly at King's Cross Hospital and see if this, um, what's his name? Oh, sir? The man he took to the hospital. Oh. See if he's oh, in oh, shape darling. to talk. I want to see him at once and discover if we're right. But we can't understand him, you said, sir. Oh, well, in that case, where did you take the animal, doctor? Bow Street, sir. Well, telephone them and have them sent over to the hospital to interpret for us, will you? Now, hop it, Constable. Yes, sir. Excuse me, Inspector. Yes? Wasn't this supposed to be the door that was hammered down by the murderers? Yes. Before the murder? Yes, of course. And we know it was done with the same hammer that murdered the fellow. We know that. Look at the mark the hammer made. 
on the door frame. Yes. Yes, what? There's blood in the marks. Mm hmm. And, uh, let's see the hammer again. They match. Then we're both thinking the same thing. How could blood get into the marks on the door before there was any blood on the hammerhead? The door was hammered down after the man was killed. Inspector! Who is that? Who is. Your constable? Yes, Eastman, is that you? It is I, sir. Get the car at once. No, sir, I can't. What? What's wrong? Well, sir, he is run away. Who's run Who's away? Who's run away? It's the parish in the hero. The man what jumped out of the window. What? He's run away, sir. He's gone. Nobody knows where he is. <laughs> We found them after a two-week search. He was hiding in the cellar of Mr. Ainley's bungalow at the zoo. Ainley found him. I also heard Ainley tell you. I was quite sure from the very beginning that Tom Bell did it. I knew why. Tom Bell was a substitute elephant man. The boss was Ahmed Ali always collected the pennies the children who visited the zoo gave to Chang, the big grayish-white elephant, the kid's friend. Tondo got none. One day, Ahmed Ali, who, unlike most Mohammedans, liked the taste of alcohol, had beaten Chang. I know. I dressed the poor beast's wounds. And little Tondo loved Chang, too. That's why he murdered Ahmed. I was sure of it. And I liked little Tom, too. I was sure we'd find him hiding with his poor, broken leg in the cellar of the bungalow by the window. The window that looks out on the elephant enclosure where Chang lived. So they brought the little elephant man to trial, and they sentenced him to hang. But there was a great and good man who stood beside the little Tom Bow before the criminal court of appeals. And the day came when the judges listened. And when the great man finished speaking, the little dark man was sent away, a free man, to Burma, where the elephants come from. Heard today in Whitehall 1212, Horace Braham as Inspector Tupper. Others in the order of their appearance, Harvey Hayes, Lester Fletcher, Guy Spall, Morris Dallimore, Francois Grimard, and Gerard Burke. This is Lionel Rico speaking. Whitehall 1212 is written and directed by Willis Hooper. <laughs> Thousands of Americans have made blood donations to our armed forces. Ask any of them, and they'll tell you that donating blood is simple, easy, almost effortless. Practically every new blood donor says, why, there's nothing to it. No, there's nothing to it. Yet that simple act may mean the difference between life and death to a boy fighting now in Korea. There are millions and millions of Americans who can give blood so easily, and yet we need hundreds of thousands of pints of blood to prevent needless suffering and loss of life. Every one of us who can should make a blood donation to the armed forces now through your local Red Cross chapter. Call the Red Cross or blood bank in your community for an appointment. Do it today. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Mm-hmm.